Jordy here for Cinecamp.net and welcome back to Copycat Friday in which we try to recreate visual effects from famous films and music videos. But today is something different, we're looking at an Apple event. And oh boy was it colorful, not always to our taste, but hey, Apple fans will buy it anyways. Now what caught our attention the most was the three-dimensional line that we saw going through the Apple campus, which was done really cool. And it ended with saying hello, and then my good pal Tim Cook came into the frame and started a speech. So that's what we're going to recreate today. Today, sit back and enjoy. The dirt is slaughter. Our testing shot will be extremely easy and in fact all of the shots in this effect will be easy. For this I put the camera on a tripod and I will do a really simple pan movement. There's only one thing you need to make sure of and it is your shutter speed. Because we'll be tracking this shot right in After Effects and there you want to make sure you don't have too much motion blur otherwise the tracking won't work. It's a bouncy leaf. Nature. You would think creating such a line would be easy. Just 3D track your shot, draw your line and place it in the shot. Well, you're gonna have some issues. When working with 2D or 2.5D, you can place your shots in the depth of the shot. And that is actually what we need. So to counter that, you will obviously have to animate the taper and do a lot of tweaking to that taper. But then comes the 3D tracking. In your real shot, the environment has a parallax effect meaning the background will move slower than the foreground. And when we camera track our shot and place our 2D flat line in that shot, you won't have that parallax because the line will be a flat plane and will move at a constant speed, not having that parallax effect. So we looked for a way to create the line in the 3D space of After Effects without third-party plugins. And the idea we have is actually quite simple. We have a null object which is moving around in the 3D space and is also controlling an emitter. And that's it. Now that we know our idea will work, it's time to go shoot the actual shots. And there are three types of shots that Apple did, so we'll do the same. The first type is a still shot where the line flies by. The second one is a pan movement following the line. And the third one is a big moving shot done with a drone. Luckily, we have a drone here at the studio, but because of regulations here in our country, it's not possible to just start flying everywhere you want. And that is where Storyblocks comes in, our sponsor for today's video. If you don't have a drone or are in the same situation as us, you can easily download these from their library. They have drone shots of cities, forests, open fields and many more in HD and 4K. Next to this, they also have a huge library of stock footage with time lapses, animals, people, logo animations, After Effects templates and so on. And the best of all is that you only have to pay a single price per year to have unlimited downloads. So go ahead and download all the drone shots you need for this project. Now, if you want to know more about this, click the first link in the description down below. And now that we have our drone shots, we can go outside and shoot the final effect. Hello and welcome back to our first event. Is that, is that Tim Cook? How does Tim Cook talk? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Storyblock. Hello. I'm gonna text Quaid. <laughs> Come on. Hi, hi. I'm trying to reach Lorenzo. Ah, I think they are there. Okay. You are probably wondering why I'm flapping around like crazy with a flag. Well, I'm not going crazy, I think. Maybe. No, we're actually creating practical effects. When our line is whooshing through the environment, it also needs to react with the environment. Of course, you can make it yourself hard and do it all in post-production, but let's not, and let's do most of it practical. We 
We have all the shots that we need, so let me show you how we made the line effect. Our first step was to camera track our wanted shot. Then we looked for some tracking points that were always in the frame and hovered over it to find the best target. Once we found that, we created a solid and a camera. The solid isn't really necessary, but it gave us a great indication if the tracking was a success. Next up, we animated our null object in the 3D space. A tip I can give you here is to look for a tracking point in the distance where your line animation will start. Here we created a null object on the tracking point. Now the null object will automatically lay in a distance in your 3D space. And now it's just a simple animation of the null object going from whatever side you want to another. Next up we created the line with an emitter, which is actually quite simple. However, linking the emitter to the null is going to need some expressions. But don't worry, we will leave a link to those expressions in the description below. So to link it, open up the properties of the emitter and then the producer. We then all clicked on the X, Y and Z position so we could fill in our expression. We copy and pasted the expression from the X position and of course we changed the name of the null object to the name of our null object. And this we did two more times for the Y and Z axis. Look at that, our line is linked, but let's tweak it to get the right look. And of course our settings will probably differ from yours as every scene is different, but we will show you the main settings you need to change. First, increase the longevity a little bit and in the physics property we are going to set the velocity, the inherent velocity and the gravity to zero. Also set the animation to fractal uni and for the particle we set the type to bubble and the color map to custom. Then for the settings that will differ from ours. To get the line as smooth as possible, play around with the birth rate, the birth size and the dead size. You can increase these to smoothen out your line. With the radius of the producer, you can increase the height and the width of your lines to your likings. And with the custom color map, you can choose the colors. So tweak it completely to your likings. Now we do have to say that you will probably never get a complete smooth line. This is the limitation of creating the effect within After Effects. But you can always try to add a simple shoker to the line and maybe give it some extra smoothness. Next up is some distortion behind the line. We just duplicated the line and renamed the displacement. We then threw a fractal noise and a fastbox blur on it. Now on the original clip we added the displacement map and set the displacement line as the source and now we just did a displacement on the luminance for both horizontal and vertical options. Now one final tip and detail, if your line goes behind something, just rotoscope the background out and place it back in front of the line. And if you want you can also add some extra details like smoke and leaves flying up if the line passes by. Of course make sure the assets make sense. Hello! I mean, we didn't have enough time to write hello, so it's just... Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've learned something new today. Thank you, Storyblocks, for the support. And as always, stay creative. So we searched for him. Searched. And when we 3D, and when we 3D, oh yeah, 3D crack. And when we 3D, oh yeah. Ah, and when we 3 3D, and when we 3D, man! And when we 3D, oh, jongens, 3D track. And when we 3D, and when we camera track our shit. <laughs>